guys. Okay, so before I get into the actual review itself, a uh, quick somewhat off-topic question for anyone to answer, but does someone know if a chapter is going to be released next week, or if there's going to be delay, or Horikoshi just taking a break? Because I'm reading all my, all my Shonen Jump manga on the Shonen Jump app, and it didn't give me, like, a time frame for a chapter 346's release. So, yeah, if anyone could tell me what what's going on, that would be great. Um, but, okay, right from the jump, I like how this chapter emphasized the idea of how there were, in fact, more than one... There was, in fact, more than one stage to Hero's plan, and that capturing the vill villains in those confinement cells was really just the... The, fir the first stage coming coming into play, which, yeah, I, I really like, which again, I really like how they're kind of turning, like, the whole thing on, on the villain's heads, like, where, where All for One has always been the one of the plan, but now they're turning that whole idea on its head with him, and, and, what well, and, what well, well, and just, see, and, just, and while the entirety of this chapter was seeing stage two take shape, and just seeing the entirety of this chapter seeing stage two take shape was great, um, on on top of it just being, on top of just for, on top of just for the fact that it did feel like Horikoshi showed things slowed things down a considerable amount in this chapter pacing wise. I also like how Monoma how Monoma having use of Kirogiri's powers actually provided like the perfect narrative layout for the fights because what while not making the the while making while not making the setup feel overly cluttered like like using using normally using Kirigiri's quirk basically provided the perfect means for in order to separate everyone into their little separate fights and I kind of love how I, I kind of love how just just a simple just a simple use of use of a power like that can can, can be executed. Um, of course, in typical Horikoshi fashion, there had to be that one moment that didn't go entirely to plan. And in this case, it's the idea that he that Izuku is now facing Toga alongside Ochiko. And honestly, I don't know how to feel about this particular setup because while we did get the explanation that the fourth danger sense, I guess, kind of gave Izuku like the wrong signal of which one was of which one was more dangerous, combined with the fact that I'm sure Monoma probably overshot the location. It's one of those things where. I'm okay with him being there for being there for now, but I don't want Izuku taking the spotlight of this fight of this fight and key moment away from Ochiko. Like Ochiko versus Toga, in my mind, is a test to see if she's if Ochiko is truly capable of saving someone who is lost without help, without help and uh, help on her own power on her with her own will. And I feel Izuku being there to help her could potentially just downplay the importance of this moment for her character. So to that end. I'm hoping this is just a stopgap, and he's, and, and Izuku's, and Izuku's thrown in place to, what was was just was just thrown in here to shake things up a bit. But next chapter is going to focus on getting Izuku to Shigaraki. I, I don't know, but I don't know if that's going to be the case. But but the thing is, just just the fact that. But I don't, I don't know. On a, on a narrative level, j just the fact that the again, just the, I don't think, I don't think the force, the force quirk wasn't working in the way that Izuku thinks it did. I think what Horikoshi is trying to tell us with this chapter is that Togo what, what was the more violent and more dangerous threat than compared to Shigaraki. But I, and and that to me kind of tells me that Izuku is going to be a part of that fight. He is going to play a bit of more of. A, more of a part in that fight than I would like, but we'll, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, I'm, again, I'm hoping that at the very least Ojiko does take up majority of like the the importance of that fight. Um, and all for one, yeah. Please do me a favor, get off your fucking high horse, you absolute dick cheese. Like Shoto didn't get, get forced by Endeavor into fighting Toya. He's wanting Shoto has Shoto has wanted this fight of his own accord for a while now ever since the whole liberation war ended like if anything it's the other way around with shoto he's he was the one forcing endeavor to tag him into this fight we, like he wants like shoto wants this moment he's he's ready for it and like shoto's ready for this he wants this moment like it's like for like for Sh like for shoto this is th this moment here is not just about beating toya although i'm sure it's not just about being toya although it's it's not just about being Toya. I mean, it is part of it. It, it for for Shoto, is it? A, it is about showing 
it is it 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 is it is 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 pretty much about the whole crux of the fight is about showing Toya, like his brother, his strength, but it's for for Shoto, it's like he wants to show Toya that he's not just Endeavor son or Ray son, but he's both their son, one who's embraced both sides of the Todoroki family, all its darkness and all its light that. All the dark, including all the darkness and all the light that comes with it, whereas Toya has only embraced one side of their family, one, what, like, and, and and only the darkness, and that is one of the that is one of the many reasons as to why that fight is probably the most hype fight for me, in my opinion. Like, it's it, it's it's all about showing Toya, it's all about Shoto showing Toya that, yeah, he might have started out like him, but he's now kind of come full circle as a complete, not just a complete hero, but a complete human being. In the sense where he's com- where he's embraced both sides of his family, his family l- legacy, and yeah, again, all for one. Just please shut the fuck up. But who am I kidding? It's you, it, you are you, and that's an impossibility. You will you will talk until the end of fucking time. And yeah, not gonna lie, when the battle started, I never imagined the final battle would be taking place in the air by making UA not only just a fortress. But a floating force, but honestly, that is a very clever way to create the perfect, like, environment for this battle. Because now, for the most part, there's nowhere to run until the battle... There's no way for the villains to run until the battle is actually over. Like, that, this really is, like, the one... The one final battle where everything just needs needs to be settled now. It's going to be settled now. Um, now, with that said, why I'm a little concerned with the setup for the battle with Toga... The possibilities of what the battle with Shigaraki is going to look like has... Has me, has me, ex- has me excited as well because if I understand the setup correctly, it's basically Bakugo and Best Genius facing down Shigaraki alone, and it is a very clever way in order to give Bakugo his more his own like separate moment to fight Shigaraki before like before having Izuku jump back in. But the only question is how is Horikoshi gonna play a setup like this? <clears throat> is he gonna do a classic Dragon Ball style where Bakugo gets beat to hell and Izuku? like, arrives just in time before Bakugo is killed? Or is it going to be more Izuku finds a way to get get back, get get to Bakugo's location and or, and arrives in the middle of, like, in the middle of the battle before it gets too heated? Like, the, the, que- the question in either scenario, though, is is how, is how, because from my understanding of the circumstances, Monoma is now, like, blocked off from using the warp gate for anyone who's inside the barrier, so, yeah, and, 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 and honestly, I don't think he's even close to, to any... I don't, I don't think he's even close to UA, so, yeah, he'll, so, yeah, he'll, he'll have to wait and see, but, we'll have to wait and see, but right now I've got no clue how Izuku's gonna get back from, gonna get back into battle from this, like, it's, it's really, it really does feel like a, like, they're, it does feel like Bakugo and Vestrini just kind of got put in a rock and a hard place on this one, but, again, we'll just have to wait and see, but, uh, yeah, guys, that's pretty much all I got for this review. If you enjoyed the video, like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on Twitter, Analyst Control. Be sure to notification bell, subscribe button, and just share the video around, guys. Dark Night Bunny, signing off. Later, everyone.